If you've ever painted with oil paints or acrylic paints, you know that those highly opaque and creamy media are capable of creating some incredible textures on the surface of a painting just by using thick paint. And watercolor can't do that, right? Or can it? In today's video, I'm testing out a new product. I'm gonna be trying the Schmincke Aqua Modeling Paste. According to the website, it says that the aqua modeling paste is ready to use and can be applied with a palette knife directly onto your surface. What it does is it creates this relief-like texture however you apply it, and you can paint over it with watercolors. So we're testing this out today. I'm super excited about this. Now, what better painting to try with texture than Van Gogh's Starry Night? <laughs> so we're gonna give this one a go. Who knows, it might be a total flop or it could turn out awesome. We'll have to see. Now I'm modifying the design of Starry Night a little bit by using a circular panel. I wanna show you my panel here. This is actually a hardwood panel and you can see it's got the cutout just for hanging directly onto your wall. These are made by Trakel and it came as a white surface, but I had to prepare it for watercolor. So what I did was I put three coats of watercolor ground on it. If you're not sure what that is, watercolor ground is a substrate that prepares any surface for watercolor. And that's gonna be a similar concept as what we're doing with the Schmincke modeling paste today. But that way I just thought the whole thing would be covered and ready for the watercolor, just in case I miss anything with the paste. I have a couple little mixing jars, a palette knife, a couple of brushes that are a little stiff in case I want to use a brush to apply the paste. And apparently you can also mix in some of your tube paints with the modeling paste and paint it on in a colored version. So we might play with that today with our mixing surfaces here. And since Starry Night is mostly blue, I'll be using my Daniel Smith Ultramarine Blue and maybe putting down just a light layer of the blue and maybe some yellow to show myself where to paint the stars later. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. I've never done this before. So we're just gonna do our best. Now the first thing I wanna do is draw a sketch so that I know exactly where to put the modeling paste. And I have an image in front of me, of course, of Starry Night to guide my decisions because what's gonna matter is the direction that I put down that paste. I want it to match those swirling skies, those circular stars, and just the movement that we love so much about this amazing painting. So let's see how this goes. So for the sketch, as I said, we're gonna have to adjust it to make it a circular composition. So I already drew the moon on and I had to push it in a little bit to fit my composition. And and then for the tree, I wanna make sure I include that prominent tree. That's an important part of Van Gogh's painting. And I'm gonna tilt my board up a little bit so I don't accidentally elongate anything too much. Now that we've got the sketch on, it's time to try the aqua modeling paste. Oh, this stuff is so cool. It's just like working with oil paint or acrylic. It definitely has a little bit of a fluffier consistency. It's kind of like frosting, almost exactly like frosting, I would say. But instead of just kind of scraping it on one stroke at a time, I'm finding it's really easy to just dollop it on in a huge chunk and then just push it and pull it in the shapes I want to match the stars and the sky in Starry Night. This is gonna be so fun. I continue swirling on the modeling paste, looking rapidly back and forth between the Starry Night painting on my computer screen and the board in front of me, trying to match as closely as I can the general direction and movement and shape of the scrape marks that I'm putting into my modeling paste. I am gonna try adding a little bit of paint to the modeling paste. So this is Hansa Yellow Light, and I'm using a stiff, small brush to mix it up in a separate palette. It is important to mix the modeling paste separately and never apply it directly to your pan paints or it can ruin your paints. So definitely mix separately and clean your surface immediately afterwards because it will dry really hard. So I use the yellow to paint that swirly moon as just a base color underneath everything. And the nice thing about using this combination of paste and paint is that you can actually combine thick yellow and thick white at the same time. I also mixed up some ultramarine blue with some of the modeling paste. I noticed that you do use up a lot of your watercolor paint when you're using this method. 
So if expensive paints are scarce for you and you don't want to use up so much paint, I definitely recommend painting over the top of the modeling paste rather than using this method. Although this method worked really well for getting down some base color, especially on the moon and on these swirling blue skies. I also tried to mix a little of the blue paste with some of the yellow in a similar way that Van Gogh may have allowed some of those colors to touch, creating almost a green color where the two colors meet. And so I was trying to simulate that a little bit with my movement with my palette knife, especially around the moon, the shine of the moon, where the yellow meets the blue. And some of this could definitely be done with the watercolor paint afterwards. So this was just my one little experimental section where I used the colored paste. After using up my colored paste, I rinsed out my palettes right away and already they were beginning to harden. This method of using the paint with your paste, I think takes just a little bit longer because you'll have to take the time to mix. You could certainly do the whole painting this way, but as I said, it would use up a lot more paint and it would be more time consuming with all of the mixing with the paste. So after using up my colors, I just switched back to white and continued to use the modeling paste all over just with the white and the palette knife. I didn't really use the brush anywhere else. It's been a long time since I worked with a palette knife and this was just really fun and relaxing and totally liberating. I love using this texture, it's just so fun. My version of the swirly sky is a little bit stunted <laughs> since I had to modify my composition and bring it in slightly instead of being a horizontal composition, of course. So it's still a slightly different shape and I had to leave out one of the stars. So for those of you who are Van Gogh enthusiasts and you know that the 11 stars in the sky represent something, I'm sorry, I did not put in 11 stars. I think I have maybe nine stars. <laughs> so I apologize if that bothers you. This is just my version. So I continued modeling all over the sky. I think one of the hardest parts to model was actually the city because this is where the movement of Van Gogh's brush strokes were a little less consistent and a little less predictable. Anytime you have this convergence of different square shapes with rolling hills and circular shapes, it's just gonna be a little more tricky. So after using up all the paste on the cap, I thought I would use that up first. I rinsed out the cap so it would go on cleanly when I put it back on my container. And then I continued to work with modeling paste directly from the tub. So the circle here is 14 by 14 inches diameter. So a pretty large surface and I had tons of modeling paste left over after this so you can feel free to use lots and lots of this product and if you order a big tub like this it should last you for many projects for quite a while so that's good news and my palette knife by the way is just an artist loft palette knife I bought at Michael's super cheap palette knife nothing special so I had to really slow down, as I said, working around the little buildings here. I wasn't too concerned about covering up my pencil sketch because when I put areas of the modeling paste on fairly thinly, it left plenty of the pencil lines showing so that I could eventually follow along with my painting later and not get lost. So it took me a little over an hour to apply all of the modeling paste, but once I was done, I was really thrilled with how it turned out and I just love the look of it even as a white painting. All that texture just says so much. At the very end here, I did apply some more white all over the top of the moon, just so we have a nice mix of white and yellow right there. Whoa. Check out that texture. This product worked perfectly. The only bummer is that I'm gonna have to completely wait for it to dry before I can dive in with my paint. And honestly, I think that'll be the fun and fast part after I've already done all the texture. So I'm gonna let this dry for about 48 hours and then I'll come back at it and finish the painting. All right, we're back. I let this dry completely. It didn't take 48 hours. In fact, it only took about 24 hours, actually less. It was already drying even when I was working on it a little bit. So it didn't take very long. If I had applied thicker texture or just more of the modeling paste, it definitely would have taken longer to dry. So this is exciting. We're ready to start painting and I'm just gonna be using my regular watercolor paints. This is gonna feel so weird to paint on this surface. So let's see how this goes. All right, my first color was ultramarine blue. I just used my regular round brush. I think this is a size eight round brush and started applying it, moving my brush in the direction of my modeling paste. And when I observe Van Gogh's painting, I can see kind of this tan underpainting in a lot of areas of the painting. So I was trying to imitate that a little bit with some yellow ochre thrown in there between the streaks. Now, almost immediately, I realized that if I didn't use enough water, 
I was discovering that my paint was definitely just kind of sinking into the valleys and catching on the surface and there were definitely little gaps that were staying white and that were getting missed with my brush strokes. So probably the slowest part of this was that I had to be careful to fill in all of those little gaps. For this stars, I used a combination of Hansa Yellow Light, Gamboge Nova, and then a little mix of the Ultramarine with the yellow to create that suggestion of green around the edges. You can see all of those tiny little white gaps in the sky. That is not something that you'll see in an oil painting because with the oil and acrylic paintings, you're going to just use solid, thick, opaque paint and cover the entire surface. So I had to be really careful if I wanted this to imitate Van Gogh's painting to cover all of those little pockets and gaps within the texture of this piece. For the moon, this was so fun. I just painted that with Gamboge Nova and it wasn't a very perfect shape. I did struggle a little bit since the swirls in my texture were not quite perfect, but it was still really fun to paint. And then I added a little bit of turquoise blue around the outer edges, again, imitating where the paint would have mixed on Van Gogh's surface. I used indigo to continue to darken the sky and ultramarine, lots of ultramarine on this one and a little more turquoise around those stars. The star at the very top of my composition was completely manufactured from my imagination. Of course, in the same style, I had to extend the top just a little bit higher to fit my composition. So the sky was really fun. It was really relaxing. I loved being able to study Van Gogh's work. I've never seen it in person. Leave me a comment if you have seen this painting in person. Tell me what you think. Now the tree was probably my favorite thing to paint. I did use black for this and I rarely use black, but I thought it was appropriate since we're working with opaque paints. And I used a yellow ochre underbase for the entire tree. Now painting this first, it's actually kind of fun. You can see some of those washes on the tree where the green and the yellow are. That is what you can expect with this product. If you're using watercolor the way it's meant to be used with washes and glazes, you'll see some of those amazing fun effects. Now, because I was trying to copy Van Gogh's painting, I'm gonna to have to cover that up eventually, but it was really fun to see those blends of color on this surface. It's really similar to working on an aqua board or something like that. It's not anything like working on cotton paper, but it does work really well for the watercolors. Now I grabbed a couple tubes of gouache. This is white and blue because in that swirly yellow portion of the sky, I was noticing that the blue overlapping the yellow was just turning green and I needed more of an opaque blue to match the painting. So I mixed my white and blue gouache and painted that over the top of the yellow and that worked well so that it wasn't just green. After that was finished, I was able to switch back to just pure watercolor and continue with the painting. This is the left side right next to the tree here. Again, trying to fill in all of those little gaps with my brush and also mixing in some burnt sienna and yellow ochre for that sort of brownish effect, that tan effect that we see in the sky in the original painting. I listened to an audiobook while I worked and just got lost in this painting, adding lots of dark indigo swirls to the sky and constantly glancing back at the original painting to check my values and colors. This is completely different from my usual style of painting for those of you who follow my work. So you know that this is quite a departure from what I usually do, but that's what makes it so fun, right? Now here's the lamp black. I use this to paint the tree. I wanted to make sure there are still little gaps of that tan showing, sort of like what you see in the original painting. And I also dropped in hooker's green and burnt sienna. You can see little hints of that in the original painting different colors all mixed but still incredibly dark. This is the darkest value in the entire piece. So there's our wonderful gnarly tree. I also used the lamp black for this distant mountain and dropped in little pops of color here and there. Van Gogh was so good about inserting these little bits of light so there's almost this hopeful aspect to looking over this dark town. You see the little lights in the inside of the city. The city was the hardest thing to paint for sure. It was very complex and I had a hard time following the original painting. It definitely wasn't perfect, but here's another section where you can see the watercolor just doing its thing and blending beautifully. Van Gogh did sort of this outlining thing with these rolling hills. And so I used my lamp black to outline some of the buildings and the shapes of those hills. I also used a lot of other colors like ultramarine, turquoise blue, this is pretty much pure ultramarine across these hills here. It was really fun to add all of these details at the end. All right, it's finished and time for the big reveal. Ta-da! 
I'm actually so happy with how this turned out. I couldn't have even imagined it would work this well. Here are some of my final thoughts on the Schmincke Aqua Modeling Paste. Absolutely fabulous product, especially if you're just wanting some more texture in your watercolor paintings. This was such a fun project. I don't think I would actually approach it like this next time. If I were to use this modeling paste more seriously, I think I'd play with more of those actual watercolor effects that are possible with it instead of trying to recreate it like an acrylic painting or an oil painting. It's just gonna look different if you're letting watercolor do what it should do, which is create transparent washes and glazes and blooms and soft blends. And doing the Starry Night as my piece for this wasn't able to really show off those effects. So I think if I were to do this again, I would just try my own project maybe and make it more watercolorly. Is, is that a word? Watercolorly? But I'm definitely excited to try another project like this. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried the modeling paste or what project you think I should try next. Maybe a self-portrait in the style of Van Gogh. Who knows? Could be super fun. Thanks again for watching. Check out this next video and I'll see you over there.